Welcome to Adam's apple. It's so beautiful. Why only in Adam's we have this? I will read it. It's short and sharp. This gland in the throat, it's called Adam's apple because Adam ate the apple and he couldn't swallow it. Don't swallow the apple. This is a secret, not for you. Apple of knowing. You don't have to know. Only God knows. So out of fear, always we have this. He cannot talk, only the wife. That energy. He swallows, doesn't eat it. It got stuck in the throat because he was feeling divided. Half of him wanted to eat and explore, and half of him was afraid, and he did it in conflict. So don't create more Adam's apples. Never, ever do things totally so you can swallow them and digest them. So don't listen to any other. Listen to your apple. Eat it, honey. Enjoy it. Just trust your heart. Don't listen to any priest, to any mother, to any father. The first seven years, if we have a good motherhood, you know, and then you start feeling the body. You start feeling the energy. We are going now to schools and to kindergartens. It's all stupidity and ignorance. I don't want education. I want knowledge, knowing. I want to know. I don't want to believe. I don't believe in believing. So what's going on with all this science, all these degrees, all these so-called titles are pebbles. We are killing each other. Mr. President, kill this. And Mr. President or His Majesty the King, they give an order to kill thousands of people. Admiration. One wants to be admired because one has no respect for oneself. I don't respect myself. I don't know who am I. I don't know myself. So I want to be admired by others' thoughts. What do you think of me? Oh, she's beautiful. She has beautiful clothes and she's very rich. Her diamond ring and this and that. And the house, you know, she has many salons and many maids and many cars. That's good, but this is not my identity. This is not what makes me myself. It's only a toy. Enjoy the toy. Know that it's only a toy. What is your toy? To me, it's the book, it's the pen and paper. And when I was young also, I enjoyed having good clothes or going. But I always felt when I was eight, nine years old that there is another existence. I don't belong to this place. And when I was 24, I tried to commit suicide because I said, if this is what life is, get married, have children, this is not it. When you are ready, the light will come. The book, Zen Macrobiotic by George Oshawa. And since then, I'm still running in, go in. The book is the best friend, the best stick. Stick to it. Or I stink and sink. So I love to read books that really gives me what is my hunger, feeds my hunger and thirst my quench. Ah, it's so beautiful. A single note is continuously repeated to every child that whatsoever you are doing is not right. You are doing what should not be done and you are not doing what should be done. Every child is given directly and indirectly the impression that he is not really wanted, you know. You have to be a doctor, you have to be this and you have to be that, and then you have to be rich, and this is what you have to be, a successful American, European, Lebanese, go to war, kill people, be the general. This creates a deep down wound in all of us and rejection to ourselves. To cover up that wound, we expect admiration. Admiration is a compensation. If you respect yourself, that is more than enough. If you love yourself, there is no need for anyone to be admired. Know yourself, love yourself, be who you are. There is no desire at all because once you start expecting admiration from others, you start compromising with them. You have to fulfill their expectations. Only then will they admire you. You have to be according to their dictates. 
you cannot live a life of freedom. You become crippled and paralyzed. You become retarded. You don't grow up. You become so afraid of your own self that you are constantly on guard because you know if you allow yourself, you are bound to do something wrong because all that you have ever done was labeled wrong and now there is a trembling inside. You cannot depend on yourself. You have to depend on others. What my mother told me, what my teacher what the priest, okay, what my husband, how did they look at me, how the others look at me, how I'm socially accepted, oh my God, fixing and wake up and make up and uh, plastic surgery, how do I look, you look great, okay, how do this one looks, don't look, thank you for not looking what I'm wearing, don't ever, ever look what I'm, I just, this is me. I accept you as you are. But I'm not what I wear. I am the awareness. And I know it myself. All what I know, I know myself. I don't know the others. This is why all the people that I lived with, I supported them financially, mainly all this, you know. They are all Judases. They are still playing Judas. So I said, if there is no mirror to me in Lebanon, I leave, I go to India, live in a commune where we are all mirrors to each other. We were the same color in the day and the same white color in the evening. So we all look alike and the color of awareness and witnessing and total surrender. White light. We all have the same birthright. It's not imposing any idea on the other. We are all sannyasins, which is free. We are all born free. Why put me in a cage? Why give me a label to please the other? I don't want to please anybody. I want to please myself. I want to love myself. Nobody loves me, only me. Love your neighbor as yourself. So I want to love myself. If I have no water, how can I give you water? If I don't have love, how am I going to love you? So when I know the treasure, I give you from that treasure and I show you your own treasure. The more I give, the more I receive. Giving is receiving. So don't depend on others. In Sufism, Muhammad said, Istafti albak walaw aftuk. Ask your call, your heart, even though if they say you are wrong. Don't listen to others. Listen. Hear and listen. And live what you listen, what you hear. Experience. After you experience the water, the thirst, the hunger, the dance, then you become the happenings, the dancer. Then you are the dance. It's not the body. The word adultery, the meaning, the ordinary meaning of the word adultery is making love to a woman you are not married to. Can you believe it? Now, after 2,000 years, when the priest said, I have to give you permission. This is the way, the Christian position. When she is pregnant, you don't touch her anymore. This is dirty. This is adultery. We are all prostitutes, you know this? In the law of all religions. It's not the religion, it's the religiousness of the heart. Love with love, light with light, life with life, honesty with honesty, compassion with compassion. Not man and woman, not the body, but the being. The body is only a door to the being. When you are in love, the other one and you, we don't look at the body, we don't look. We look, we are one with the body and the being and the light. And you stay this forever. Do you remember that story when the man said to the doctor, I want to go to my wife. And the doctor said, how can you go to a wife that she's in Alzheimer, she's in coma, she doesn't know you. He said, she doesn't know me, but I know who she is. So he goes every day, touches her and 
be with her and then comes home because he's not with the body he's with the being that the being still listens and hears and be touched even when we die the body keeps on you know the nails growing in the hair the energy is there we don't die we leave the body and then we respect the body immediately how to bury it dust to dust, earth to earth, food to food. So there is no adultery. You are an adult. When you are with your husband, with your wife, with your lover, and you are not in love, that's adultery. When you are thinking, what I'm going to cook tomorrow, when is he going to finish? You know, when Adam was by himself, God told him, I'm going to give you a gift. Here is a woman for you. Woman, Eve, yes, Eve, woman. So the first day, he was so good, and the second day, and then the third day, he came and said, God, she told me that she has a headache. Yes, because you don't know. He said, you are so stupid. And this is what's going on now. She accepts this because he doesn't know what the foreplay, he doesn't know what love is, he doesn't know 24 hours you are in love. It's not fucking, you know. That one is a sneeze, because and I. This is why we have no marriage, we have no divorce, we're just, you know, dead with the dead. We are not buried yet, so many people going there, so many noisy, it's like too many people going and we are waiting for our time. So don't feel guilty that you are doing adultery. Whoever you love, go and tell them, I love you. If the other one said, I'm not in love yet, you know, okay, but I love you. It's the love that keeps people together. If the other side, you know, still searching, it's okay, you search, but I found mine, the other is still searching. Just when you are in love, you attract the one that's for you. Love and lust, you have to know the difference. And man is a very complex phenomena. Today, you may be in love with your wife. Yes, even with your wife, you may be in love. I know it's difficult, it's hard, and it's very rare too, but it happens. Today, you may be in love with your own wife, and then making love to her is a prayer, is worship. It is communion with God, and this communion can happen even with some other women with whom you are not married. If love is there, then it's not adultery. If love is not there, then even with a woman you are married to, whatsoever you are doing, is adultery. So are we honest when I say I love you? You don't need to say it, but don't tell me. Don't tell me I love you. Show me. That's great. Show me love. The more you say it, it's so disgusting. We are teaching our kids, tell her that I love you. I said, don't say it. They know it, they are being it, they are living it. Tell her mercy, tell her thank you. They don't have to. We are all victims of victims. Be a victor, be a rebel, it's time to wake up. Advertising, that's the way the whole art of advertisement exists. Just through repetition. Na 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 soft drink, soft drink, soft drink, diet food, diet food, die in it. So we repeat the lie and the lie the more you repeat it, like Hitler said, I lied. And the people believed it, they repeated it, and then I said, If they are all believing in it, so why not me too? When neon lights were discovered and advertisements were put in a neon lux toilet soap. Anything else, you know, any lux. Everybody was into lux. In the beginning it was a fixed light. You could read it once. Soon psychologists suggested let it be flickering. It comes on, goes off, comes on, goes off. So by the time a person passes, it will have to read it at least 20, 30 times because it goes off and this repetition each time a person passes by. What happens? Repeated everywhere. 
wherever a person goes, let him come across sucks, lux, toilet soap. And soon he is hypnotized. He goes to the market, to the shop, and starts asking, lux, toilet soap. And he believes that he is choosing it. Somebody else has chosen it for you. This is now how the others are choosing a man and a woman, a wife, a husband. Everything is arranged, arranged marriage, arranged food, arranged menu. You sit there and the couch potatoes, that's one, the other one I want. That's with, the, with this light, with the color and everywhere. On every street, you look at this, pictures, pano, like porno. Pano, the same. In America, only the wanted, if somebody is lost or wanted. But when they put pictures for all these, you know, presidents, they are wanted too. Not better than the others. At the time of Muhammad, nobody, you know, voted for others. The so-called, the chosen people in the village, they go and choose the best of the village, the one that, who is rich money-wise and who is rich character-wise, attitude-wise. And then he will be so-called the ruler, the father, the imam, the khalifa of God, khalifa of Allah. You represent God, Allah. So this is how they lived until then. We made politicians and politics and institutions out of all the religions, all the Buddhas, all the Christ, all the prophets. Okay, box. And with one you belong. I'm a Christian. I'm a Buddhist. I am this. I am that. You are in a box. Come out of the cage and fly high in the sky without leaving any, don't leave any footprints. Nobody has to follow you. Be your own master. No followers, but fellow travelers. Advice. People, they give us advice. Listen. But don't follow. Okay, thank you. That's all. Listen, but don't follow. Listen well, but follow your own insight. Don't follow others' advice. Very meditatively try to understand what they are wanting you to do. They may be really well wishers. Listen because people have great experiences. And if they are not listening, you know, they are just out of love. Your mother, your father, your beloved, they give us advices. Thank you very much. Listen to them. They are doing their best. But then you listen to your heart. You can take the horse to the river. But if the horse is not thirsty, they don't drink. It's only us, you know, okay, let's go and eat. There's nothing else to do. Let's read the menu. What do you want? What do you want? Nobody is hungry. Nobody is thirsty. Just, you know, compromising and just we want to please the other. I don't want to please anybody anymore. Be a rebel and please yourself. And if the other is pleasing themselves too, we are too. Then everyone is a free being. You are your own master. It's good to listen to the other's advice. It's from their experiment, their experience. But you have to live your experience too. The real friends help you to sharpen your intelligence. They don't give you fixed advice because fixed advice is of no use. What is true today may not be true tomorrow. And what's right in one situation may be wrong in another. And situations are changing all the time. So what you need is not a fixed pattern of living, but a way of seeing. So wherever you are, in whatsoever situation you find yourself, you know how to behave spontaneously, how to depend on your own being. Commit mistakes. Commit mistakes as many as you can, as much as you can. And learn from every mistake. But let us do new mistakes every day. I learn from your pain, you learn from my pain, and we support each other to be free, to experience life, 
Life is not an experiment in the lab. It's an experience in life. So it's good to give advices. But the real friend is not the one who advises you, but who helps you to become more alert, more aware, more conscious of life, its problems, its challenges, the mystery. That's the only support. Interdependent, help each other. Aesthetics, in the name of aesthetics, there is much garbage. But when I use the word aesthetics, I don't mean the garbage collected in the museums or in the gallerias. No. When I use the word aesthetics, I mean equality in you. It has nothing to do with the object, painting, music, poetry. It has something to do with equality in your being, a sensitivity, a love, a beauty. Where is the aesthetics now? Where do you look? Plastic surgeries, this mall, that mall, the clothes, the shoes, uh, you know, the painting is for selling. What is flowing from our heart? All the kids, the children, the baby, they have the aesthetics that is still fresh from God. But all what's going on now in society, in schools, universities, hospitals, churches, temples, whatever, it has nothing of an art. Nothing of ecstatic. Buddha is a poet, although he never composed a single poem. Still, I insist that he is one of the greatest poets who has ever lived. He was not a Shakespeare, a Milton, no, at all. But still, I say, a poet from the heart. Muhammad, the Quran. It's so beautiful. Jesus, all what he said, not what they wrote about him. A living light, a living silence, a living world. That's who we are. That's what we are doing together. It's the being in us. It's not the mind. It's out of meditativeness out of this nothingness like that's our birthright it's not a question of objects of art it's a question of an inner approach a vision of seeing things artistically bypass any gallery and you will not lose anything but you cannot bypass an aesthetic layer of your being you have to go through it there is something inside us you feel it it's so beautiful but when you go out a museum, a galleria, or whatever. This is an object like this, done, to be sold. But there is something, nobody can sell it, nobody can say it. It's your life. It's what you have added more beauty to nature, more beauty to the others. Nothing has to be bypassed. Everything has to be lived, loved experienced. Everything has to be absorbed so that you become as rich as it is possible to become. That's the real richness. It's not only the money. I love money. But how to use it? Where did it come from? We rape the Mother Earth. So the money is not the paper power. The money is what we give to the many how to share who we are. Look at the kids, look at the babies, look at nature. That's what nurtures us. That's the real, yes, aesthetically, beauty. So beautiful. One has to become totally enlightened. Nothing should be bypassed. No shortcuts are to be invented. One has to move very naturally through all the layers because all those layers are opportunities to grow. It's like the onion. Layers and layers and layers. This is our life. In every day, every age, every step. Be a watcher. Be yourself. That selflessness. First be selfish. Love yourself. Unless I love myself, I'm going to love you. Then when I love myself, that's it, you are me. 
age. You are not the age of the body. Jesus, when he said, I am before after, and after Abraham. You are only 30 years old. How come? He was speaking from the mystery of life. He was on a totally different age. The Jews, they were in a cage, the age of the body, talking from the mind. He had no mind. When he was a little boy, a little kid, he said to the mother, You are not my mother, you are not my father. I belong to heaven, to somewhere. I have a father and a mother. That energy. You are only a woman that I love and respect. And so a father for this place. The people who followed Jesus were all young, almost all of them his own age. The people who followed Buddha were of his age or nearby. The same was true with Mahavira. The older a person gets, the more caution they become. So only what happens, he's young, hippies, we follow them. But Muhammad lived with his beloved Sahaba, Khalifa, 63 years. And he spoke with the kids, with all ages, with all colors, men and women, poor and rich. He knew how to compose an orchestra with all the layers. And we all tortured him, you know, we stoned him and nobody respected him. Nobody knew who he is until when they felt, oh, he's dying. Out of guilt, people started crying. But now, who knows who Muhammad is? Why in the name of Islam, in the name of Jihad, we are killing so many people, millions. And the same, the Crusaders. And Jesus said, I'm here to share love with you. Muhammad said, I'm here to share the compassion with you. We are all one family, the royal family of Allah. We are all brothers and sisters. It's not the age of the body. It's the age of the sage that has no body. It's a being, never born and never died. So by reading what about knowing ourselves, then you know the age of the body. It's okay. The body goes back. As Francis said, the body goes back from earth to earth. My clothes to my father and mother. But my soul and spirit and self to God. And he became a living Christ. Francis, in spite of the church, he became a Christ consciousness. And he said, every one of us. And somebody, they told him, you are mad. He said, okay, I was mad. Now I am a sage, but you don't know. That's what madness is. When you are mad in love, when you are mad in God, when you are mad in this existence, this beauty, that's the real madness. Be drunk and be mad. With yourself first. Then you know that you are part of existence. You are the drop of the water. You are the wave and you are the ocean. Meet, melt and merge. Die. This is what La ilaha illallah. There is no God but God.